right, so let me just fix the volume over here. Good evening, everyone. Happy Friday night. This camera's a little far up in the air. I hope everyone had a fantastic week this week. We are here for live read with me session. Oh, did you hear my voice crack? We're live, a live read with me session of someone exactly like me. We are cranking through this book. We're getting closer to the end. Last night, I was in tears. I know Angel out there was in tears. Um, and good gracious, y'all, I wrote the book. I know what happens, but I still made myself cry with my own book. Um, so we had a beautiful and emotional scene. And we are continuing tonight with the story of someone exactly like me, Nico Mancini, who is an Italian actor who has skyrocketed to fame after his saucy role in a saucy movie. And he is looking to take his career to America, to Hollywood, and uh, build his American dream, but he doesn't have representation in America. He meets Destiny Cardone, who is a successful best-selling author who happens to be in just a bit of a slump in her career at the moment, um, and she's just kind of struggling to get back on her feet. And she happens to have a mother who works in Hollywood. So together they strike a deal to help one another, and as the terms of their deal play out, Mm, some sparks fly. There's a little bit of a love connection. There's some ups and some downs, and it's a beautiful love story. It is slow burn. Friends to lovers, obviously a Mediterranean hero. We have celebrity hero as well, and it's just a fun read, and it's a little bit of an emotional read. Um, so you can get it on Amazon in paperback, and an ebook, it's free to read on Kindle Unlimited. You can also get, well, I have two announcements for you. You can get signed copies um, from me on my website of someone exactly like me. And of course, of my other book, Untouchable Zane, also slow burn, also celebrity hero. This one is reverse age gap. Um, and you can get signed paperback copies for $15 in the continental United States. Um, but I also have Valentine's Day boxes available right now where you can get both of these books and a bunch of other goodies for $57, also in the US only. Um, so you can find out if you want any details on that, just send me a message because they're already starting to get sold and we're only in, we're only on January 7th. So. Um, let's get started with our reading tonight. As per usual, we will be going PG-13. I will replace any curse words that I can possibly replace or body parts. Um, uh, some scenes will have to be omitted so that I do not get myself banned and kicked off. So let's get started. We are starting tonight on chapter 24 and we are in Nico's point of view. The pounding in my head throbs behind my burning eyes like a bad hangover. It's been a long time since I cried like that, probably not since dad died. Though I'm grateful for Destiny's dad finding Anna, the news that I had a son and he died rocked my freaking world. I thought it hurt when Anna vanished with my child in her belly, leaving behind a note basically telling me I'm worthless. That was nothing compared to this. My heart aches with a pain I've never experienced. I can't imagine being with anyone other than Destiny to receive that information. Her comfort and compassion drew her deeper into my heart, making the next few days even harder. By the time I drag myself out of bed and to the kitchen, Marco's gone to work, Angelina is out by the pool with Franco, and Destiny is tucked into her, her lounge chair, typing on her computer. I walk out to the pool area, squinting from the sun beaming into my sore eyes. Good morning, I say, scratching my head. Good morning, Destiny's voice is like sweet nectar. I catch her eyes sweep quickly up and down my chest to my abs as she shifts her in her chair. I love that no matter how many times she's seen my bare chest, she gets flustered. Angelina has breakfast waiting for you if you're hungry. Mm, I am. Did you eat? Yep, I ate earlier. It's almost lunchtime for me. She smiles, a playful, adorable smile. Thank you, Angelina, I call out. She waves as I turn to go back inside. Destiny rises from her lounge chair and walks in with me. She heats my plate and sits next, next to me on the stool at the kitchen island. We don't have to go to the beach today if you'd rather stay here and relax. I know last night was tough for you. It was, I sigh. I'll always mourn my son, but now I'm truly free. I'm free from Anna because of you, and now I'm free from anything that tied me to her. I reach out, taking her hand in mine. If it wasn't for your kind heart and your dad's help, I would have always wondered. I would never have been at peace. And now... I can, 
I can start to find a way. For this, I can never repay you. She reaches out her other hand, cupping my face, love penetrating her eyes. Nico, there's nothing to repay. That's not how I work. She pauses, moving her hand to my heart. Your son is with your dad in your heart forever. Placing my hand on top of hers, I close my eyes. Thank you. I take a breath before releasing her hands. Do you want to stay here today? No, I scoop scoop scrambled eggs onto my fork. I want to take you out for some fun, I smile. Okay, as long as you're sure. I'm sure. Should I shower if we're going to the beach? No, we'll shower when we come back. Just put on your suit and sunscreen. Angelina will give us towels. I finish eating. We pack our things and head to the beach. Since I slept late, since I slept so late, we're off to a later start. I stop to get us lunch before we get to the beach. When we arrive, we find a spot to set up for the day. Wearing her cover up, Destiny sits in her chair and eats her lunch under the umbrella, under the umbrella, reading a book while I lie out in the sun. When I open my eyes and look at her, she's finished eating and her book rests against her body. She's fallen asleep. About an hour later, she stirs. Are you ready for some fun? I ask. Absolutely. Make sure you have your sunscreen on. Yep, she says, taking off her cover up and grabbing her sunscreen. Through my sunglasses, I watch every stroke of her hand, rubbing lotion into her milky white skin. Will you make sure I got my back thoroughly? She hands me the bottle of lotion. Standing up and taking the bottle, I squeeze a little onto my hand, rubbing, rubbing my hands together. Reminding myself that we're in public, I smooth the lotion across her shoulders and back, massaging the last of it into her lower back. I'll skip the next sentence. Without moving her body, she turns her head, looking up at me. Thank you. Taking a deep breath, I exhale, stifling my desire. You're welcome. We walk to the hut where I rent a jet ski for us. Putting on our life jackets, we get on and I drive us slowly out to the open water. The sky is clear, the sky is clear of clouds and glints of sunshine sparkle on the dancing peaks of water. I turn my face toward her. I'm going to go, I'm going to go faster now. I want you to hold on to me tightly. I won't go too fast. Sometimes it gets choppy in the waves. She squeezes her arms tighter around my waist. Okay, I'll let you know if it's too fast. Yes, let me know and I'll slow down. This is meant to be fun, not scary. It's tough to hear out there, so squeeze me hard so I know. Okay. With her securely holding on, I pick up speed, zipping us through the water. Keeping to straight lines as much as possible, I make any turns slower and wide. We cut through the waves and bounce around in the choppy spots. After about 20 minutes, I stop to check in with her and see how she's doing. Undulating in the water, we, bo we bob with the waves. I turn my head so she can hear me over the hum of the engine. How are you doing back there? She loosens her grip around me. I'm good, this is fun. I wasn't sure if I'd like it, but I do. That's great, I rented it for an hour, but we can go in anytime you feel like you're done, okay? Okay, I can probably go for another 10, to 10 or 15 minutes. All right, that sounds good, you ready? I'm ready, she said, cinching her arms around my waist again. With that, we're off again, skimming the surface, water spraying around us. I'm so happy she's having fun. From behind us, the cigarette boat speeds in front of us. The wake is huge, and I turn the handlebars, trying to avoid smashing directly into it. My turn is too sharp, and Destiny's arms jerk off my waist. I turn my head to see her body hurtling through the air, crashing onto the water. No! Fudge! Destiny! I turn as fast as I can back to her, careful not to collide with her limp body. Adrenaline rages through me. The waves bump against her jet ski. The waves bump her against the jet ski. I'm able to grab hold of her life vest and pull her out of the water into the footwell. Destiny, I shout. I rest her head against my thigh. Her eyes spring open, filled with panic. She clutches her chest with one arm and latches tightly onto my skin with her other. Her mouth hangs open. Damn, she can't breathe. Sit up. I hold my arm across her chest, straightening her body. Push your stomach out and breathe in slowly, now. Her fingers dig into my skin as she does what I say. Blow it out, pull your stomach in, do it, I'm here. Keeping my arm across her chest, I wipe the wet hair off her face. Finally, a deep gasping inhale followed by a labored exhale. Bouncing in the waves, I hold her tight while she finds the rhythm of her breath. Releasing her death grip on my shin, she wraps her arms around my legs and leans against, around my leg and leans against it. Are you okay? Are you hurt? I ask, stroking her head. She looks up at me, a sluggish 
blink to her eyes and nods. I'm okay. I don't think I'm hurt. I don't feel hurt. I think I just got the wind knocked out of me. As she goes to get up, I help her maneuver, sitting her on my lap facing me. I think I'm done now. She smiles, making me laugh. Yes, we're done now. I get my phone out of the small waterproof container around my neck and call Angelina. I need you to get Dr. Master, Master Giovanni to the house. Destiny fell off the jet ski and was unconscious. She's fine, but I want her checked out. We're still in the ocean, but going back in now. We'll be there soon. I pause, listening to Angelina. Thank you. Hanging up, I put the phone back into the container. I don't think I need a doctor. I'm not hurt. I want to make sure. Pressing her against me, I kiss her head. I'm glad you're, I'm so glad you're okay. Wrapping her arms around my back, she leans her head on my chest. I take a slow pace to shore. Once we're back on the beach, I, we go directly to our umbrella. I gather our belongings and we go to the car. When we arrive at the villa, Dr. Master, Master Giovanni is already there. He and Angelina greet us as we walk in. Dr. Master Giovanni, thank you so much for coming out on, on short notice. I really appreciate it. I don't think we need the hospital, but I want her checked out. This is destiny. He nods at her and smiles. Hello, she says quietly. As I explain what happened, we all walk to the living room and sit on the sofa. We were in the ocean on a jet ski and she fell off. She was unconscious for maybe 20 seconds and got the wind knocked out of her. I need to make sure she's okay. I understand, he smiles. Let's check things out. He takes her pulse, <coughs> flashes light into her eyes, asks her a bunch of questions and has her move her body and head in different ways. Once he completes his evaluation, he looks at me, nods, then looks back at Destiny. The good news is you're fine. And there's no bad news, he smiles. For tonight, I want you to rest. Can someone watch over you while you sleep, he asks, looking at me and Angelina. Yes, I can, I say. Good, you don't need to watch her the entire night. Just set an alarm for every couple hours and ask her simple questions. What's your name? Where are you? Those types of things. I'm certain she doesn't have a concussion, so this is just an extra precaution. Yes, I can do that. It's not a problem. If her condition changes or you're at all concerned, call me. If she changes dramatically, go to the hospital first, then call me. He looks back at Destiny. I'm sure you won't need to do that. You won't need to, though. Thank you again, doctor. I really appreciate your time. I stand up, extending my hand. Anytime, Mr. Mancini. It's my pleasure. Standing, he shakes my hand. Angelina sees him to the door, and I sit down next to Destiny. Thank God you're okay. I take her hand in mine and kiss it. So it looks like we're in for the night. What do you say to supper and a movie in bed? I like the sound of that, she nods. I think I'll take a shower first. I'll sit in your bedroom, listening. I don't want you falling in the shower, Angelina says, walking back over to us. I'm sure I'll be okay, but if it makes you feel better, that's fine. Together, they go to Destiny's room. Now we jump to Destiny's point of view. Oh dear, I missed this one, that would be nice. I don't know what would be nice, oh dear. We can go back to that. I grab my pajamas, then head to the bathroom. I won't be long, I say, passing Angelina, sitting in the cozy chase. Take your time, I'm going to use the time to read. She smiles, settling into the chair. The warm water feels soothing on my skin. Though I'm a little shaken, I really do feel okay. They're so sweet to worry about me. I close my eyes, letting the water run through my hair, down my body. Nico's words from our conversation last night play in my head. He said things I could never have imagined him saying to me. Someday, a man worthy of you will come along and see all these things I see in you. What did he mean? Those aren't words you say to someone without some emotions behind them. Ugh, I leave in a few days. What does it matter anyway? I wash my hair and body, towel off, and put on, and put on my pajamas. A quick blow dry of my hair and I'm done. Walking out of the bathroom, I go to where Angelina is on the chase and sit on the floor next to the bookshelf. She closes the book she's reading and puts it back on the shelf. I love that you have all these books for your guests. This is such a cozy corner. I love reading. Now I have to get some of your books, she smiles. Well, I'd be honored. How are you feeling? She asks, putting her feet on the floor and her elbows on her knees, clasping her hands and leaning forward. Shower felt nice. I'm okay, I promise. And I promise to let you and Nico know if I don't feel okay. Good, she pauses. He told me what you did for him, finding Anna. She looks down, shakes her head, then lifts her gaze. You took such a heavy burden from him. He carried so much pain. 
Thank you for what you did. It was really my dad. I'm just happy we could give him closure. She tilts her head a little to the side. She tilts her head with a little side smile. He cares for you. He's a good man, I smile. I think maybe you care for him too. She leans her head toward me. I pull in my lips with a shrug of my shoulders. Doesn't matter if I do. Of course it does. I leave in a few days. Besides, look where his life is headed. There's no room for me. He's on a path to fame and he'll have his choice of millions of women who swarm at his feet. She shakes her head. You have much to learn about his heart, ragazza dolce. Standing, she holds out her hands to help me up. Come, let's find some movies for you to watch. I quickly put on my sweatshirt. <clears throat> I quickly put on my sweatshirt. When we go into the living room, Nico's sitting on the sofa, strumming his guitar with his notepad and pen on the coffee table. Franco sits next to him, watching him. He stops strumming when he sees us. How are you feeling? Good. Honestly, I feel fine. The shower felt good. Yes, I showered too. I'm just faster, he winks. I got some movies for us to pick from, he says, pointing to the stack on the coffee table. Okay, great. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, great. Thank you for your help, Franco, he calls out as Franco runs to Angelina. He hands me the stack of movies, then takes his notepad, pen, and guitar and walks toward my room. Thank you, Angelina. I wave to her in the kitchen where she's helping Franco with a toy. I've been working on your song, he says, sitting, uh, sitting on the side of my bed. Can I hear it yet? I ask, closing the door. It's not finished yet. That's okay. Can I hear what you have so far? I sit on the chase across from my bed. He strums his fingers over the guitar strings and smiles at me, lifting his knee <clears throat> to rest on the bed. It's called Blood in My Veins. Ready? Hanging his head slightly, he looks down, positioning his fingers on the neck of the, of the guitar. As he strums, his body sways. I was told my fate long ago. I'd never measure up. I didn't have what it takes. Glancing up at me, he shakes his head, still swaying. I'd never be good enough. I believed it all, down to my core, down to my core, until I looked into your eyes. Lifting his head, he gazes into my eyes and strums, eyes that told me a different truth. I shared my deepest secrets. You opened my heart. Looking down briefly to change his finger position, he returns his gaze to me. You're the blood coursing through my veins. You're the breath filling my lungs. He strums and sways, nodding his head to the rhythm he's created. Tangles cover me as I listen to his words, words he wrote about me. I can't keep him out of my heart. Doing a rapid strum, he slaps his hand across the strings, then smiles at me. That's it. That's all I have. What do you think of it? I, it's beautiful, Nico. My heart hurts at what can never be. He lifts his shoulders and gets off the bed, leaning his guitar against the dresser. It needs work. He takes his notepad and pen and puts, on, puts them on the dresser, then grabs the movies and lays them out on the bed. Do you like any of these? The variety ranges from romantic comedy to action packed. I pick Mission Impossible. Grabbing all the movies, he puts them on the dresser, then loads the disc into the player. We fluff up pillows and sit close to each other on the bed. Do you need a blanket? Oh, yes, that would be nice. Gets off the bed and takes a blanket from the basket next to the chase. Before getting back onto the bed, he drapes the blanket over my legs. Thank you. As the music plays on the movie, he jets his head back and forth to the beat. He's impossibly cute. By the time the credits roll, we're both hungry. I don't feel like cooking, and I'm not going to have Angelina cook for us. Let's order something. Before he can ask what I want, pizza comes out of my mouth. You want pizza? He laughs. Feels like a pizza night. Then pizza it is. I'll be right back. He leaves to place our order. As I wait for him to return, my emotions are torn. I do care about him. I can't help myself. I'm scared I care for him more than I'm willing to admit. I love being with him, but reality tramples whatever it is I feel about him. In a few days, I leave and I go back to my life. And he continues on his path to fame and everything that comes with it. Nothing can exist between us. His phone chimes. Not want to be nosy, but it's right there on the bed. A text from Giovanna. I can only see the first line that's lit on the screen. Call me. Followed by a kissy face emoji. Reality stampedes again, resurfacing my insecurities and reminding me why I'm here. He comes back in. About 20 minutes. Your phone chimed. I pointed his phone as my chest burns. 
He picks it up and reads the text, then puts it down. It's not important. Hmm. Okay, your pick, I say, confusion swirling inside me. Standing in front of the dresser, he surveys the movies. This one, which one? You'll see, he switches the discs. You'll like it. Looking back at me, he winks. It's a long chapter. We're coming up to a uh, time gap and I'll stop there. As he jumps onto the bed, smelling of smoke, the proposal lights on the screen. For a playboy, you have a wicked romantic side, I tease. He leans on the bed facing me, propped up on his pillow, propped up on his elbow. You have a lot to learn about me, Mia Dolce Ragazza. His eyes drift back and forth between mine as he sits back onto his pillows. About 20 minutes into the movie, Angelina knocks on the door. We look at each other with wide eyes saying in unison, pizza. He pauses the movie and we go to the kitchen where Angelina has set out trays, plates, and napkins for us. He comes out of a back room with a dinner tray, grabs the pizza boxes, and goes back to the bedroom. Angelina and I follow with the smaller trays. So we enter the room he leaves, coming back with Cokes and glasses of ice. Before Angelina leaves, she takes, <clears throat> he takes her in his arms and plants a loud kiss on her forehead. You're the best. She shakes her head and laughs as she closes the door. Thank you, I call out. I put two pieces of pizza on each of our plates on our trays, and he pours our drinks. We climb onto the bed, slide our trays in front of us, and watch the rest of the movie while eating pizza, while eating our pizza. We laugh at the same spots. He smiles at me when I cry at the end. This is the perfect night. After we finish eating, we bring our trays and dishes to the kitchen. I put the dishes in the dishwasher while he puts away the trays. I'll be right in, he says, grabbing his pack of cigarettes. I look at the pack in his hand, then back into his eyes. He looks at the pack in his hand, then back into my eyes. Not a word is spoken, just an exchange of glances. I don't know what that addiction feels like. From the way he curls his lips in at the corner and casts down his eyes as he turns to go outside, I know he's disappointed in himself. I go back to my room, brush my teeth, and get under the covers of my bed. For the first time, it hits me that he's going to be sleeping beside me all night. He enters the room and closes the door. What did you pick? He looks at the movies on the dresser and then at me. I didn't, I pause. You know, I feel completely fine. You don't have to stay and watch movies with me. I'm sure you don't need to wake up all night long to keep checking on me. I promise I feel fine. He takes slow strides toward me and sits on the edge of the bed facing me. It's my job to take care of you, he says softly, tucking my hair behind my ear. I want to. Standing up, he walks back to the dresser loads a new movie and turns off the lights. As he sits on the bed and puffs his pillows, the bow starts playing. I sink lower under the covers while he lies down, his head propped up on his pillow. All right, we're gonna stop there because then we have a time gap. And I know Angel knows what scene is coming up. It's a softy scene that we might have to skip a lot of. But that's where we have ended for tonight. I hope you are enjoying it. Let me know in the comments. If you are enjoying it, I would love for you to like and share this video. And of course, I would love for you to subscribe. That would be delightful. I would love to have you here in my little world with me. Thank you very much for watching. Um, it, as it is Friday and I don't do these on the weekends, I give myself a little bit of a, little bit of a break and you know, get errands and chores and all that kind of stuff done. So. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. TikTok, you stay with me. Uh, YouTube, I will see you on Monday. Have a great weekend.